All right. So let's go to the 1416 rundown. Riot Mort here, and it is time. Two weeks have passed since the launch of Magic and Mayhem, and it is time for the patch 14.16 rundown. Now, we launched the set, and generally it's been pretty good. There's a really good base in there, a lot of fun origins and champions, and the yep. charms have landed really well as Agreed. well. Um, that being said, some augments and a few champions definitely out of line. <laughs> <Yep>. Syndra. <laughs> a few champions, Sorry. some augments. A little cold today. Um, but, you know, uh, that's what the first patch is here for. We're here to make some adjustments and get the patch in an even better spot. And the nice thing is when you have a really solid base of a really good set, a couple of balance changes is easy versus like having to giant rework and stuff like that. So overall feeling pretty good. Let's not keep you waiting. Let's jump he into it. He said it's it easy to fix it, so we'll see. Uh, first up, on the system side, all ah! those golems you see, whether yes. it be through the portals, whether it be through the augments... Uh, those golems are beefy. They are doing a lot, and those all those AD. golems are pretty much overpowered. So we're going to be nerfing all the golems. Great. AD is going to go down from 65 to 55. Yes. HP, base HP is going to go down from 600 to 550. Now, keep in mind, support golem has the 250 health from the support items. So support golems are still pretty beefy here. And then their ability damage is also going down. Honestly, they're still going to be really good. Yeah. Um, but they won't quite be maybe, you know, 57, 58% top four rates. Hopefully this brings them down. Um, but expect them to still be pretty good here. Man, support golems in general have been the most overtuned augments. I mean, I'm sure you guys have DN by now, but the augment data on it just like heavily indicates anything like golem is just so crazy. Support golem two, support golem one. Although shimmer scale is like really, really broken as well. Some, some of these augments are also really high up there but uh both support golems are just like they're always they're always picks and if you got like a support golem to start off the game you just snowballed your tempo because you got so much free frontline and he actually was dealing most of the damage and there's like no so bad support items and there's also some broken combos uh, i'm the carry now I actually ended up being an augment that fell off a little bit because uh it just you know it, it, it's not nearly as good as the support items and also people started playing more streamlined comps. Part of the reason why I think this was dominating at the very beginning of the patch was because uh, people were just not playing optimal boards. And as they were starting to play like more Syndra stuff, like it realized that I'm the carry now is just like pretty good, but not amazing. So that might make this augment like a 4.5, but the AD and stuff that they're nerfing is good. Uh, and, and the offensive stats from the golem, it's like a target dummy that can actually like deal damage and help you carry. So it's just, it's way too good. It still honestly might be like a 4.2. But as long as it's not like a 3.7, I think that's more acceptable. All right, traits. Uh, Blaster. I think this is a pretty small change. Uh, but when blasters are not in their damage amp state at 2 and 4, they're going to be a bit stronger. So this is like at the start of a fight before they've cast. Okay. Or if there's a bigger than 3 second window. 25? Uh, they'll be a little stronger here. Holy cow. And then cow. 4 blaster will go <laughs> from 45 to 50. So okay. 4 blaster will be a little stronger. That's a that lot. That being said, uh, you know, I played a lot of blaster on PBE. They seem okay Hui's okay uh, if you can get six blaster it's still pretty good but there also weren't any buffs at six okay you so. gotta try four blaster yeah but who knows maybe it'll help bear us out a bit uh fairy fairy vertical has definitely been struggling a bit oh yeah so uh before we go into fairy i mean i'm pretty sure the problem with blaster is also like each blaster unit itself doesn't feel particularly that great and so i guess instead of buffing them all individually they buff the entire trait because Hui it feels underwhelming i think ezra was actually kind of quite good if you can get the setup for him but um, the, the units around Ezreal kind of suck. And uh, I think uh, Varus has problems, not just with his damage, but I think his, his cast speed is too slow. The dude just literally takes forever to cast. And, you know, like it, it, that cast speed is like everything because he's supposed to hit like adjacent enemies as well. And sometimes that positioning like griefs you. And then Smolder is also quite bad. Um, unless you get like two star Smolder with everything. Uh, this kind of makes it feel like I'm not sure how big the two blaster buff is, but this is a huge amount of damage. I'm surprised they said that it wasn't that good on PB. Maybe it just means that uh, blasters in general are, are just going to be like, because like if, if it's still like this significant of a buff and it does, it feels kind of weak, that might be might mean that we have to look at the units. Uh, you play two for that item. It's like a free item for your Callista. Otherwise, you don't really play it. Uh, so four and six is going to get a buff. The damage item is going to get their damage amp buffed at four and six. And then if you have six, you have the armor. And the armor is going to be more powerful. More healing and shielding, more HP, and more healing from the queen, the one wearing the crown. Ah, so the six hopefully this to helps get buffed. a bit to be in a bit of a better spot. Frost, very light touch here. 
one AD and AP at three. Okay, uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but basically China already plays six fairy a good amount of times if they can get it. And so it could be one of those things where like it ends up being like six fairy was probably pretty solid if you knew how to play it. And it could be one of those things where like if you nerf Syndra and you like slow down the base of the game. Um, and they're also buffing fairy units from what I've come to understand. I, I think they're buffing like some of the cheaper ones. I don't know if they need to buff six fairy. Four fairy obviously definitely felt weak, so I think that's fine. Like very weak, so I think that's okay to do, especially if you want to play like the four fairy like uh, variations of boards because you want to play Rakan, Callista, and Milio, so it kind of feels bad to ever have an emblem. So uh, that's fine, but I don't know if six fairy kind of needs it. This is a lot of buffs in general, uh, so six fairy. I think six fairy is probably going to be really strong. Three, five at three, uh, five, seven, and nine. Yeah, they played it with the plus one. Uh, so vertical frost yeah, getting a pretty chunky buff here. I think this actually makes five and seven frost quite a bit better. Um, so definitely check that out, dude. One AD AP buff on frost. <laughs> okay, I mean, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if this ends up mattering. Like, why? Why did they even buff it by one? But the other, the the five AD AP on the, on five seven uh, nine frost is pretty good. Like five AD is like definitely like pretty significant. It's just funny. Uh, preserver, preserver, definitely. It's like right below the S tier stuff, but uh, preserver is a very powerful trait. Really flexible. Uh, it's getting its healing nerfed at all levels, and its mana gain nerfed at four and five. Still very good from what we've seen. Uh, that being said, there is a change here where Preserver ticks while a unit is mana locked. We'll now grant that mana after the mana lock ends. Oh. So this is one of those nice quality of life things where Wait. if you would have got a tick beforehand of, you know, let's say 12 mana, but you were mana locked. I didn't even know it, that that was happening. This will fix it. What? So. That, okay. Do you think this this by any chance is actually a Preserver like to in totality it's actually a buff because like mana mana generation was like one of the biggest reasons i mean the health hp was definitely nice Th don't get me wrong like it's especially because uh when you hit like four to five preserver you just felt like you had unkillable frontline but uh i didn't even realize that it wasn't ticking the mana when it was mana locked if you guys don't know what that means that means that if the unit cast and there's like a window where it can't gain mana that mana was just lost but now it's banked so you might be able to get that extra tick of mana. And as you know, when you're playing a lot of these important comps, when you can cast, even casting half a second faster is a really big deal, especially when it comes to shielding and stuff. Is that there's a possibility that this is a preserver buff in totality. But um, uh, I mean, it's good that they nerfed preserver because it's like way too good. Bit of a quality of life change there. But overall, this should be a nerf to preserver, but very light. From what we've seen, still very good. I expect you'll see some preserver Wukong still doing quite well. Uh, Scholar, Scholar's going to get buffed. Preserver uh, Wukong's going to do well. Yeah. Does it change much? We'll see. Um, but hopefully it helps Scholar out a bit. I mean, this doesn't actually feel like on paper. This doesn't seem like it's going to be that significant of a buff because part of what makes four Scholar really good is the clean five mana intervals for the attacks. And if you're playing like six mana, like like this becomes relevant when you're taking damage or on like a specific number of autos for a specific number like maybe the third cast on a unit or something like that second cast on a unit so i'm not entirely sure i, I haven't done the math on it but i don't know like, i don't even know i don't even know if they need a buff scholar honestly like, like sorry the traits like maybe they maybe the units in this individually could but i feel like rise is actually pretty decent just rise just can't keep up with like the syndra boards right now but if you actually watch some of the 4v4 i know 4v4 is a different meta but rise actually performed pretty well if you knew how to play it and he's just decent for top fours if you, like, understand how to unlock him. So I don't even think Scholars are that bad right now. And obviously, Milio is really, really good. Zoe's really good. And then Warrior. Warrior's another one here. Uh, you don't really see much beyond two Warrior. You'll see a lot of Gwen Fioras or Katarina Plus Ones or Neela Akalis. But you don't really see a lot of four and six. So four and six is going to get a buff. Uh, four, just 2% damage amp and Omni Vamp. Six, five percent. This doubles. It, 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 he's making it, it sound like two percent, but this doubles. So and 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 adds up over time, especially with all the individual damage procs. So this is definitely a nice quality of life. Like Katarina, Fairy Warrior. Maybe you play four Fairy, four Warrior. You get a plus one Fairy. You play like six Fairy. I don't know. I don't even know how it works exactly math wise. Like what you want breakpoint wise, but there's certain there's something there. Like they're buffing Katarina like in so many ways right now makes a difference but you know i'm sure some of you are looking at this going fairy and warrior that must mean katarina so hopefully katarina <laughs> can be playable uh on the small I side caught, bastion caught. Six i don't know what to say eight. caught 
are going to get a buff. <laughs> uh, five more armor and MR at six, 10 more armor and MR at eight. Again, minor stuff. And then the other one here is it felt really weird to have this chrono stop, this two and a half second yeah. stun, which feels like crowd control. But, and then CC, you have a but Quicksilver and didn't you're like, guess, why is it still stunned. working? It's very weird. It's very unintuitive. Yeah. So we decided to change it so that if you're immune to CC, you are immune to CC. Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so Quicksilver, maybe a better item here as well. Four chrono, six chrono, small bit of a nerf here. That's a huge nerf, yeah. potentially. Uh, because this this not only this not only means that Quicksilver is gonna be effective, but the charm that says your whole team is immune. Um actually does that it, it's for eight seconds, right? And then chrono kicks in eight seconds. Oh, maybe maybe actually the timing doesn't line up in the way that I think it does. So that that, that potentially that's a wash, but this is this is a potentially a big deal against chrono players. I'd look at the actual numbers. All right, on the one cost side, Jace 3 gets a very small AD ratio buff. So if you want to invest in Jace 3, okay. the spell will hit a little harder. Cool. Cool. Uh, Lilia, bit of a buff for Lilia and for Fairy and early stuff like that. Bit of a buff. Uh, 10 off the mana. So I, in Lilia hero augments, quite terrible, but 40 out of 100. I mean, remember when they just reduced Garen's mana by 10 and all of a sudden that guy became unkillable? Although it was a, it's a completely different effect. Lilia becomes a single target nuker, uh, all offense, like no defense. And Garen was just like an infinite HP scaler. So that's 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 a little that's very fundamentally different. Seraphine and Soraka, two of probably the worst champions in the set right now. Uh, that being said, even though they're bad, they are getting some connected oh, oh, buffs. Stats, Soraka right. me, can do well it. in Sugarcraft. We don't want to over buff everything. And with obviously a lot of the best stuff being nerfed later, we don't want to go too hard. That being said, they get a little bit here. So Seraphine going to get 10 more mana off her cast. Okay, just to show you guys again, it's forty. It's the forty out of ten, uh, hundred mana. Sorry and about Soraka that. And Soraka getting about an eight percent, close to ten percent spell damage buff. And then Warwick, this poor guy. There's such a fun dream in there. If you can get his attack speed ramped up, uh, it should be a lot of fun. Wait, but it's just never really paying off. That's a that's so a that's a pretty good amount of AD ability skill. I, maybe, maybe I don't understand how much damage that is, but that, but but because he's auto attacks based, and they're buffing frost which gives him AD. Uh, yeah, like me, this is actually pretty significant because they're buffing the three-star variation in particular. Like you're not like going out of your way to try to like like carry Warwick 2. Pretty small buff here at one and two star, but pretty sizable one at three star here. Yeah, three-star so Warwick buff get is Warwick pretty to work, huge. Go I'm Warwick, it. me Warwick. I know Vampiric Scepter's pretty good. From what we've seen, it's pretty good and falls off, but if you can start like 2-1 with a Vampiric Scepter and a Warwick 2, pretty good start for you. All right, two costs. Well, good thing there haven't been any problematic two costs this patch. Uh, no, uh, Ari <laughs> is going to get a small buff here. Oh, Pretty Mordog. small. You can see here it's only like five base spell damage on the main. Yeah, I mean, more has a sense of humor. On the true damage coming back. Um, but Ari's spell is also already pretty hard to hit as is. That being said, there's an Ari Zoe build that's doing very well. Yes. I imagine this will be pretty good. Uh, Galio gets to be tanky. This will help out Portal. This will help out Mage. So Galio gets to be a little bit tankier. Yep. And also uh, does uh, doesn't make deja vu particularly uh, that much better. <laughs> Maybe frontline deja vu like the the Galio here augment, but yeah. Cassidy, probably the surprise of the PBE. I think near the end of PBE, people started figuring out how to play Cassidy, and once yep. they did, he was very strong. There were some predictions that he was going to be like SS tier, but he couldn't quite live up to the Syndra height. That being said, he does need a bit of a nerf, uh, so he's going to get a bit less stacking damage. And then the shield is probably the bigger hit here, losing pretty close to a little more than 10% here. This almost is huge. 20 this at is three a star. huge nerf. Uh, so pretty big shield nerf for Cassidy. He shouldn't feel quite so tanky. Um, that being said, I think he's still strong from what we've tested on PBE. He's still very, very strong. Uh, so don't underestimate him. Don't look at this and go nerf unplayable. I think he'll <laughs> actually still do just fine. Uh, uh Kogma. yeah Kogma 3 there was a little too much power in Kogma 3 spell especially when you compared him to other hunters uh so Kogma is going to get his spell nerfed pretty small nerf at one star bigger nerf at two and pretty chunky nerf at three star uh so Kogma not quite as strong plus the thing to remember is Kogma provides a lot of utility to his team mm. he's meant to be sort of next to the jinx powering that up or a nice secondary carry um so won't be quite as strong here and should actually be Less strong than the three cost drinks, hopefully. Okay, so there's some, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. First of all, where's the Syndra nerfs? Uh, it's probably on the next page. Uh, I know that they're nerfing Syndra, 100%. Imagine if they ship an Apex without nerfing Syndra. Uh, the second thing is, this is probably too heavy on Kassadin. 
Um, I'm pretty sure this is a problem with the Riot balance uh, infrastructure because they have to predict it like seven, eight days in advance. Like they wait, they knew Kasten was out of line uh, at the very first week of the meta. Remember, we've had this as the number one comp in the game. I mean, we'll own up to it. Part of us is like saying Kasten was the best comp in the game, and we were wrong at the time because Syndra was. But at the you know at the very start off, it looked like Kasten was going to run over every bunch of stuff. And uh, as the meta started to shift to be more efficient towards Syndra and whatnot, Kasten started getting phased out. And even if you hit peak Kasten right now, he loses to Syndra. But I do think that if Syndra gets nerfed a lot, Kasten then becomes the best two-cost reroll. And so there's a possibility that nerfing him is still good. This shield nerf is huge, though. 60% off his spell shield. Like, survivability is everything for a melee carry. Like, it doesn't matter if these, these units are like deal a lot of damage if uh if they just can't survive so maybe the itemization of a cast has to change like now this spell shield probably makes it so like you just maybe need more way more defensiveness to it Where, like edge of night maybe you can't play cast unless you're playing like find vintage or something like that just, like super stack him but uh, this feels a little bit heavy-handed all right and that's it for two cost right nah jk uh since shivana is Holy. getting a slight okay. adjustment that should be a bit of a buff out. here uh the spell will scale a bit better with <laughs> ap and a bit less with hp yo uh, and the thing is, by the way, Shivana was not meant to be a tank. Shivana Holy is meant to be sort of a max <laughs> fighter. Uh, it's going to have Bloodthirster, Crown Guard being really good Ooh. items. Bloodthirster, Crown Guard, Warmogs is a really good combo. Oh, this is a, ooh, wow. This is a huge, uh, when, when you, I, I remember reading it, but I didn't like see the percentages like this. This is actually a pretty big buff. If you get like Shivana 3, I mean, she might, she actually might have the potential of just like completely dumpstering backline. Oh wait, never mind. It's one point. Okay, I thought this was green, as in this was gonna be better as well. But it's one point five to one percent HP. Oh. Uh. Okay. Well, I guess I just have to see the numbers. When they adjust it both ways, they like lower the HP ratio but increase the AP ratio. Maybe. Um. So we changed the class to Magic Fighter to hopefully make those better. And then Syndra. Yeah. Let's talk about Syndra. Uh. uh look, we want to be really thorough here. We do not need Syndra dominating the meta for another patch uh so we're going pretty hard here okay the first one to talk about is actually the cast time this is the biggest change that's the her biggest change time, for sure due to a change that tripling went in at the last it minute, over tripling probably shouldn't it. have her cast time was 0 0.3 seconds which is not standard every other champion is one second like Holy that's normal cow. for every champion in the game syndra should have been one second the cut what this did is this is why you're seeing attack speed items be so much better on her than like mana items is because she could just plow through and keep yeah, on attacking. Spam cast. This was not intended. So this is the biggest nerf there. Uh, that being said, on top of that, she is doing too much damage. So base damage is going to go down about 10%, splash damage as well. And then her scaling is going to get hit as well. So this will hopefully make wow. her feel a lot better. The one, two, three, intended. four. We've seen her definitely not be the free win that she is on live on PBE, but we have also seen her still do well if you get her early and get her stacking with like a Shojins and a Nashers. So don't underestimate her and think her she's dead dead, but she's definitely not the, you know, better than two star four cost that she is on live. Um, oh, more my sweet summer child. Two cost, two star four cost. Syndra was better than two star five costs. Uh man like uh, okay so they're, they're nerfing her damage they're nerfing her sp aoe they're nerfing her scaling they're nerfing her cast time have we ever seen such a heavy nerf to a two cost before actually let me better better ask this question do you think syndra is the strongest two star or two cost ever made in tft because if you give her shojin red buff plus any of attack speed like rage blade she just does it all she actually does single target nuke she aoe's she shreds if you give her a red buff she also anti-heals and she scales and if you give her gambler's blade she prints gold which i know is like a specific item specific but like if you give her like the gambler's blade set up like she literally does it all like short of just printing straight up frontline units for you like my god is this syndra unit is, is probably the strongest two cost they've ever made in tft you know in the world where this isn't enough i'd be shocked but <laughs> you know, I also know people are pretty sick of Syndra, so we'll keep an eye on it. But again, the cast time here is the biggest change because all the attack speed versions are going to get hit in the teeth with this one. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, Katarina. Katarina feels like one of there the three go. costs that's really hard to play. She's getting a buff. And yes, this means she's getting a buff. Warrior 4 and 6 is getting a buff. Fairy 4 and 6 is getting a buff. Yup, that's true. 
Uh, will it make her meta? Hopefully. Will it make her S tier? Probably not. <laughs> so give her a 420 try. 420 damage is a lot. Is doing well here. That is a lot. Uh, Wukong. I think. This okay, okay. Is... I need to say something. I need to say something. Katarina is also a reset unit, and yes, you did buff her across the board, but you're also buffing her tree, uh, which also means that getting to Katarina will be smoother. And uh, Katarina is a threshold unit because she tends to blink, and she, like she's one of those units where she can become very problematic if she gets out of control. Uh, so yeah, just like it, it's entirely possible that Katarina starts to get way over the line. I will say one thing that if Katarina was better, we would have had a better meta last patch because Katarina would have assassinated the two star Syndras in the back. And like part of the reason what made Syndras two such a problem was that if you just got a good enough front line with vanguards, you just couldn't do anything because you couldn't get access to the back line for Katarina. So I do think that uh, even if she's like very strong and annoying to play against, which I, I, I predict, I predict Katarina's gonna be really good. Um, I do think that her role may be more necessary in the meta than than people think it is. It's going to be a little surprising to people, but the big thing to call out here, it is mostly a one-star buff. You can see 50 shield at one star, 20 at two star, zero at three star. Uh, if you told me the three star was actually supposed to be nerfed a little, I'd believe you. Can't that being reset? said, it's oh. not like Wukong is dominating or anything like that. Um, I thought but she does. he did need the buff at one star and two star, so he is going to get those. Like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if there's a follow-up nerf on three star later. Yeah. But we want you we want Wu Kong to be the champion that if you get out of an orbit two one, you're like, yes, let's go. Well, mission accomplished, because that's game. currently where Wu Kong uh, is. But uh, you should fall. Uh let, let me see. By, by the way, I might have been spending misinformation. Blink to the largest group of enemies with two hexes and spin. Mag jam for three seconds within two seconds, two hexes and wounding them. The two nearest enemies take magic damage instead. If Katarina kills an enemy, she blinks to reposition again okay so that might be my under my, my misunderstanding of like resetting resetting has the implication like she casts again but she does have like a on enemy proc which um or on enemy kill proc which can be known to deal with my point still stands anyways uh they want wukong to be excited that you drop out of orb if you're selling wukong right now and you have any like stone play components you are trolling i'm pretty sure wukong, wukong is going to be uh, one of the units to play around. Going to we uh, the weekend events, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure most people are planning to always hold on to Wukong every single time they can. This guy is a, a complete beast. All off compared to like a Vex three with traits, or a Swain three with traits, or a Nico three with traits. Uh, he's supposed to have a lower cap, higher start, lower cap, and so that's why we're buffing the one and two star. So. Use the Explorer? I, I would, but I'm just a little bit All lazy right. right now. Four cost. Karma. Whoa. Karma's ability was a, a pretty neat design, but it Whoa. was frankly a bit overloaded, and a lot of people would read the tooltip and go, Oh, gosh. Huh? Oh, I gosh. don't get it. Uh, mo mo a lot, if not most of our players, barely even realized she had a heal. Uh, we like her damage high, but we removed the heal. The heal was very confusing. It would work with certain builds really, really well, and other builds not at all. Dash. The fact it was proximity healing was very confusing. So Rest in peace, she loses Karma. the heal. Uh, if you want her to heal, build a gun blade. So, but her damage is still just as good, so she should be fine. Is gets a small buff here. May need more later. I know Rise. Wait, is let me change my cam. By this the way, this is a very small buff. There you go. I'm with more dog. Um, but we'll keep an eye on Rise. But he is getting a buff. Uh, Tom Kench saved. Really, really powerful champion. A lot of people play him in Arcana comps. He's like probably the best itemless champion to put in your comp. But if you invest him as a tank, as a tank, best itemless bad. unit to put in your comp. Uh, so he's getting 50 HP. I don't know about that. Uh, Varus, this one's. I we'll see how that. this one lands. But for now, <laughs> uh, Varus is going to get his channel time reduced. I still think there's a lot of work to do. with Holy the wait, this is the so number big. Of times you hit like a solo tank, or you know, it just feels like you whiff. There's still work to do here. Who is but better? Karma. Karma. <laughs> Karma was the best four cost to splash into your comp. You gave your team 20% heal. And, and 10 AP, and she enabled the best unit in the game, Syndra, because if you're, yeah, like, Kar Karma was the best forecast to splash uh, in your comp, no items. But for now, this should at least let him go back to auto-attacking. Rage Blade Varus? has really strong Because it's skill attack speed? Uh, so at least you can get back to those uh. autos and get those to hit. So even if the spell whiffs, you'll still get those. Again, we'll keep an eye on things like Rise and Varus. Didn't want to swing too hard. But Varus should. Get I mean, that's a that's, that's that's a big swing. But yeah, this should. I didn't realize their buff on the PBE changes that I was looking at. They didn't include a Varus buff, so that was a big question mark. They didn't buff Olaf or Varus, and I'm like, you could buff either of them, and it'd be fine. Maybe even both. But uh, this is huge.
Uh, and then last is Briar. Briar just a little underperforming for where we want her. Obviously, everything feels like it's underperforming compared to Syndra, but uh, even for Briar, we wanted five extra AD so that if you invest in that Briar, hit that Briar too, she can be quite strong. All right, on the item side, uh, Dragon Claw and Dragon oh. Will. Uh, if you compare these oh. items to the I'd Amulet Visage, uh, frankly, they were overlapping too hard. And Dragon's Claw, when you look at it and the amount of stats it was giving, was over budget. Uh, Dragon Claw really is just too good. So we are nerfing Dragon Claw's healing and no. Dragon Will's max HP. We like that the Radiant has that heal. That's okay. It's a unique thing. Um, but, you know, Dragon's Claw is getting a bit of a nerf here. Black Goo Bums is... Uh, Goo Bums can finally rest in peace he can sleep easy tonight were the two things that goobums was complains about the most one i mean actually okay he complains about it like a lot never mind there's it's actually way more than two but one of the things that he complained about the most was dragon's claw and he always talked about how d claw was super op and uh when when dragon claw he's not wrong when dragon claw is good it is extremely good remember when dragon's claw was put on mech and it gave this like percentage hp as well uh dragon's claw is very very good and just shuts down like a lot of ap comps and very very much makes these lopsided matchup matchups and he's right because some of these items he actually tweeted about today but anima visage let me see anima visage actually gives the same amount right of uh heal 2.5 percent every second which is five per every two and decal gives more magic resistance and so it's just it's actually just straight up an orn artifact um which is a bad look for anima visage but also maybe dragon's claw is too good but i will say the one thing that felt really good about dragon's claw was that it made cloaks feel like less of a dead item and i think historically up until about set 11 or maybe even set 10 cloak has been like a giant meme of a of a component where you never were happy ever if you got close because they were too situational you got zephyr and quicksilver and dragon's call was quite bad for always i hope that it doesn't go i hope that, that when they touch items it doesn't get to the point where it feels like some components feel bad this Activist is good good artifact changes its base I think. hp a little bit it's a very powerful item it yep. doesn't need that much base hp yep capricious forge is Mogul's really good mail, same thing this item is very very good 50 hp off yep and then needlessly big gym quickly became the best support item in the game uh, it's going to lose that 5% damage amp from its start and max. Should still be good, but yeah. All right, Augments, page one of four. Yes, Augments, like I said, oh. aug there's a lot of really cool, oh. fun Augments Augment this balance. set, but the oh. balance on them, eh, a little, little off. Um, so a lot of That's big little. Augment changes here. Let's run through them. Silver Augments, Beggars Can Be Choosers. This is a very fun Augment now that it gives seven gold. Seven gold is a lot, you guys. The way you this is very similar to like ones, twos, threes. Yeah. You're mostly taking it for the seven gold. It's like a seven gold silver. Yeah, this is a But you get four Augment rerolls, and you can use that to kind of force some stuff. I actually managed to pull it off on PBE. Uh, so pretty good for a silver now. Should make it better. Um, yeah. If you're on like Ascending Augments, you know it's going to be like Prismatic Last Augment or something like that. You could definitely use it to manipulate it. it it's Find Your Center, no longer offered on 2-1, just wasn't very good on 2-1. Yep. Uh, and then Bonus HP has been buffed. Man, item I'm getting collector, more dog Little OP get. for a silver, now 5 HP per item. You still get the rest of the stats. Keepers, probably due for a nerf for a while. Well, like, thank it's you. Nerf. Uh, one, two, three, little over our gold. So we're removing one of the one cost champions, bringing it down one gold. Uh, on the house, this augment was bad. There wasn't a number to really buff it without making it become this really tedious thing where you're supposed to buy every one cost and sell them to get the gold. Oh. Uh, so on the house is removed. Wait, I thought they removed it in PBE because I actually haven't seen this on live at all. <laughs> like I thought they removed some augments in PBE like salvage bin and things like that. I thought this was part of it. I actually haven't seen it. Uh, restart mission gives you an extra two star two cost. I think this augment's going to be great for a silver now if you're willing to take it. Yeah, and what? Row rejuvenation one percent more buff. base omnivamp. Wait, this uh, this aug this augment might legitimately be like, oh, it, it might actually be one of those things where you're just supposed to take it like it, it, in like a lot of scenarios. I could see this being a, a very powerful silver. That's it for silver. On to gold. Arcane Conduit. This is the Arcana Augment. Oh. This one was not very fun, not very good, and okay. way too hard to play. All right. It's been removed. I don't miss it. Uh, Avenge the Fallen gets a small buff. Uh, once three people die, you'll get even more base stats. <laughs> uh, built this was just so sad compared to like Gifts of the Fallen and everything like that. Like You definitely just need a stat boost. 
Built different is now exclusive with two tanky. Oh, built different plus two tankies, just way too good. That was a, that was a, oh, like that was tech that I had on my sleeve. Uh, caramelized comforts. This is the sugar craft trait augment. Gets a buff of ten HP per item and another. Yeah, this augment's not very good. Gold chance per item. We literally just tested this on PBE. It's pretty fun once you get it going. Sixty percent chance to drop a gold with a three item carry. Pretty fun. Uh, Clockwork accelerator. This is a tick oh, I didn't realize it was per item. <laughs> oh, gold chance per item. I thought it was just straight up a goal. Oh, I misread this. I mean, that doesn't sound that bad. If you, it sounds like a snowball thing. Like maybe it ends up being like it was always like something that you want to take. Like if you ever took it, it would be um like after like not on two one. But I, I don't know if this ends up being something you want to take on two one. They buff Soraka as well and like some of these other units. Much quicker. Uh, front backloaded augments are typically pretty weak right now. That being said, this is a big buff to this augment. Yeah, three seconds. Uh, you know, whatever you had at twenty seconds, you'll now have at fifteen seconds. Uh, so very large buff here. We'll see if it makes a difference. But again, One backloaded augments are always Wham. a little rough. Uh, Draconic Mastery. This Wham. is the dragon trait augment that was basically impossible to play and kind of really poorly worded. Uh, has been removed. Uh, Endless oh, Hunt. Wait. This augment was... It, what, what about... No, I'm, I thought... No, okay. they they uh, One of the things I thought they were going to buff was around uh, like Namzi because they buffed Jace and they buffed Warwick and some of these other units like around it. Like maybe the hunter opener is better, but uh, it just they they took out draconic mastery. It's not very good. What? This and they didn't buff smolder. You to hunters already have to get a kill to get their AD. You had to keep getting kills to snowball off of that. And so if you oh were behind God. it all, this augment was terrible. Uh, so endless hunt has now been reworked to be called hunting frenzy. Wow. It will now give hunters an execute wow. below twelve percent. And they gain 10% attack speed. So the execute will allow them to get their proc, which will allow them that's, to get their AD and hopefully help that's them a, out. That's, so, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really strong augment uh, on paper plus, if the hunters are good. 40 HP less, just a little too good early. Explosive growth plus, this is the one on 4-2. Did they fix the bug where eternal growth is actually buffing non-shapeshifters? That was like part of the reason why I think the stats were so good. I'm not sure. Maybe there's a, there's a bug fix thing at the end. More XP per turn for four turns. Uh, fast forward, I believe this is the chrono one. Uh, we'll give you more attack speed. Okay, cool. that one's weak too. Uh, Fortune favors the bold. This augment right now, I believe, has the highest win rate in the game, even higher than Golden Egg. Probably not correct. Uh, so Fortune favors the bold. Eight and Wait, ten. Really? I thought that's exactly what the whole point was. More. If you want to really win with this augment, we want you to have eleven loss or higher. Ten loss should be like a top four. Nine and eight, it should feel like a normal augment. Um, so the eight to 10 loss has been nerfed and some of the 13 and 14 loss cash outs. If you can get to the, if you hit the 13 or 14, we want you to win. You should game. just win like, the game. That's yeah. probably a win. So, um, yeah. okay. Uh, just to put it out there, like this is just a straight nerf because no one's getting the 13, 14 loss. Uh, but yeah, eight to 10, definitely fortune was like, is basically free. The the only way you can really stop it is if you grief their cash out, but it's just really, really good. So uh, it makes sense. Uh, flexible has been nerfed. Instead of getting an emblem every stage, it'll only be the first three stages, meaning you only get three emblems from flexible. Okay. Uh, high horsepower. This is the Lilia hero augment. Easily the What's worst covering performing part hero augment in the game. Now gets a bunch more attack speed and more ability damage amp. Keep in mind, she also got that mana buff. Yeah, yeah. Will all of this combined? Okay, Lilia augment enough? has to be good now. We'll see. Has to be good. We'll see. Probably not. Maybe. All right. Maybe not. On to higher education. This is the mage one. Uh, the mana spend the required one. to proc it has gone down. Oh, no, this is a scholar one. Excuse okay. me. Uh, the mana spend required to proc it has gone down. The attack speed has gone up. Uh, item collector That's two. That's pretty good, again, actually, because the way like scholar sna uh, snowball to itself. Also, this is stacking attack speed, right? So the faster they cast, the faster they, sc they scale. Uh, it has potential to be quite good if you have the setup for it. I'm not, I'm not sure on the math on it, though strong gets nerfed uh keepers should be colored red not green that's a nerf it's a nerf uh molten caramel this is the uh caramel uh, Rumble hero augment this gets buffed more omni vamp more ability damage there's an a after the good. r pilfer really fun augment really good doesn't caramel. need for starting gold gonna take that away for now will still probably be a very good augment i can't imagine this puts it in a bad place probably still one of the better two one i mean zero, four to zero go holy cow uh oh my god that is a massive nerf because yeah like pilfer was like a straight up better econ augment than everything else 
the late game is scales so well like it's, it snowballs off your early game really powerfully especially if they're playing like wukong solo frontline like every, if everyone's going to be playing wukong frontline uh pilfers like, like like the better these early mid game tanks gets the better pilfer gets so uh i mean they need to nerf it but man that's a huge nerf i mean it's fine if you give it it might as well just give it zero gold it's gonna give it like one gold uh practice partners this is the mage one giving five mana now instead of four uh okay. press the attack again apparently i'm colorblind and can't make colors the right thing ah uh, this should be red this is a nerf press the attack getting nerfed for multi-strikers it's already a very good augment. man another cast uh, nerf. row wow. rejuvenation too small one percent omnivamp buff yep cool. they bought that silver as well Okay, School Mascot. This is another very powerful augment that's been doing really well. Whoa. It no longer has a death cap. So wow. it's losing the second item. It's losing the death cap. So that's when you see big. this number is Holy buff, cow, it's super big. Uh, remember that it just lost a death cap, which is 50% AP, 20% extra damage amp. Yep. That's gone. Big. But that would have made it too weak. So the HP goes back up to 10%. The AP goes to 30%. Okay. But again, this is a very large nerf that's to School that, Mascot. Yeah. Huge nerf, huge uh, nerf. Spell blades, this gets a bit of a this nerf. This might be the biggest like straight up nerf alongside Syndra this patch. Very good in the Zoe comp. Honestly, good in a bunch of other comps as well. Yep. Uh, but spell blades getting nerfed. Correct. Support golem no longer offered on two one. This is meant to be a nerf. Support golem is very very meant powerful to be a on nerf? two one. We're purposely saying nope. You've got to wait for it when the golems don't <laughs> make quite as big a difference. How could it be interpreted uh, anywhere tooth, else? Going to lose a hundred bonus HP. Honestly. Sweet Tooth is still probably going to be a very good hero augment. I can't imagine this moves the needle too much. Maybe, maybe. Part of what made Nunu really good, though, was, like, the dynamic of Kog'Maw. So you're nerfing both Kog'Maw and you're nerfing Nunu. Uh, maybe it means, like, you play, like, Vagar as the, and, and it becomes around three costs more. If more people are rolling, like, Wukong and Katarina, it transitions to being a three-cost oriented meta instead of two-cost. means you roll on seven for Nunu. But um, I could definitely see... I'm pretty sure Sweet Tooth is based off of like the two cost meta. Like everyone's pulling Syndras and stuff like that out, making Nunu more efficient and you're able to get online quicker. But it's entirely possible. Like they also buff Bastions and things like that. So uh, I think this is this is fine. Uh, three's a crowd. It's going to get buffed. Hopefully it helps some three cost reroll comps have that augment. Okay, Mort's covering uh, it. How much do you get buffed? Trait Tracker was meant to be a high risk augment that you're like, you have to figure out the comp, put yeah. it together. Yeah. But it turns out when you get it with flexible, it's like guess i win uh so they're now mutually exclusive oh that's good get... that's good i begged for this trait tracker and flexible it just was so dumb because flexible gave you the traits and then you just get trait tracker and you just get all these things and you hit plus one arcana and they would literally have a hundred and like 15 damage amp like you look at you look at how much damage amp they get on their stats and it just says like 115 and i like rub my eyes i'm like is that right but yeah it's, it's, it's actually disgusting if they ever hit arcana off of uh, the trait tracker or flexible 75 okay that's the all right page four too healthy uh two cost reroll doing very good right now it's gonna lose 10 hp here vertically inclined a little okay. weak so it's getting a buff and we'll no longer offer it on two one when Makes it's sense. bad yeah um so you, you never took later, it one not earlier witchy wallop this is the poppy hero augment damage up and the time between wallops is gonna go down so it'll look smoother it'll feel smoother whoa and is technically a buff. that's big uh, that's worth big. the wait uh, this is the one that gives you a bunch of one costs. Uh, the turn delay will be a little later. Yeah, they're buffing all the one so cost hero augments. Three star one cost even sooner. Wait a second. They're buffing Watchy Witchy Wallop. They're buffing uh, Lilia's hero augment. They're buffing Lilia and they're buffing Warwick. They're buffing Endless Hunt, which is really big for Namzi. On the very low, it, it could be one costs. It could be one costs. And they're buffing Ari right for the Zoe the rerolls stuff. Like it, it, on the one on the on the low hand or the low key rather, I think uh one cost could be really really good this patch we'll see uh now on to prismatic anger issues this is the fun ginsu's lots of ginsu's one we like this augment it falls off way too hard it's going to give you five more armor and mr per uh wait ginsu's. i kind of like that anger issues is not good though but it's like a fun augment i hope this never becomes like too good but i don't i don't know i don't know if five mr mr armor and mr will be that good so you can actually have a front line with this hopefully that'll help we'll see uh assassin's toolbox now grants a prowler's clow Yes, apparently we got rid of Prowler's Claw, and it's now a Claw. It's definitely not a typo. Oh. Uh, but it used to give that, and then a Gold Collector three turns the later. Prowler's Claw. Uh, instead, it's going to give you that and an Infinity Edge right away. Uh, those two items synergize really well, and okay. you get them early. So hopefully cool. this should be a buff like, to the Augment. It used to be Gold Collector, right? really well on some of those front line, like the, the Nila, the Akali, stuff like that. Uh, at what cost was giving 16 bonus XP? That's going to go down to 8. Probably didn't need 16. 
Yeah. Uh, Wait, dark very, very good. Dealings. This is the one that gives you the uh, the, the, trench coat? the trench coat. It's going to be delayed only three turns now, so that's going to go down. Giant Is this augment that weak? Dark alley dealings. Let me see. Dark alley dealings. This is four point nine five. Okay. I, it didn't seem like that bad of an augment to me, but I guess it's terrible in the data. This is one of our new generic combat augments that just gives HP. A lot of way HP. too good. Uh, it's going to lose twenty five off the base. It's like it's like, it's like it's like cybernetic really bulk, generic. unconditional. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It's, it's, sorry, uh, three hundred is uh, gold, but um, but it was just really, really strong generically, and and for a lot of comps that need the front line, very cheap front line, it ends up being very good and it scales well too. Combat augment that gives seventy armor and MR to the team. That's going to go down a bit because um, it makes that item so much better. Prismatic ticket chance to proc has gone down and no longer <laughs> offered on four two. Hopefully, the no longer offered on 4-2 is a buff. This one's questionable, but... Yeah, keep an eye I mean, it. you're mostly taking 2-1, 3-2. Uh, support Golem 2, same as Support Golem 1. Wait. No longer offered on 4-2. Oh. That's meant to be a nerf. And then the last one here. So, what the Forge has some of the worst stats we've ever seen in an augment. It's really, really, really bad. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to play all the artifacts. You <laughs> get random artifacts. You don't have a ton of control. Um, so... Oh, yeah. Support Golem <laughs> should say 2-1. Oh, way, I see. Um, <laughs> My God. What the Forge. Uh, we're going to take a stab here. We buffed it up pretty, pretty yeah. heavily. Yeah. Uh, that being said, it might still be bad, but we really didn't want to remove the fun for people who really oh. like playing with all the artifact combinations. So we want to see if we can get this uh, our, you know, augment to be a little bit better. That being said, if it's still bad here, we might just have to cut it. So. It's a huge buff from 110 to 220. I will say that when i played it with sugarcraft it ended up being like quite good with sugarcraft but that's like that was on pbe so like there's no way for me to actually know because part of it was that with between gwen fiora and your front line your back line like jinx you should be able to hit like a combination of artifacts that are good but yeah like i don't think um what the forge is very very powerful and they're buffing it from 110 to 220. It, more covering on the screen uh, which is huge all right uh small augments yes that's right a fifth bonus page of augment changes uh, Bastion Ooh. Crowns getting buffed will now grant a Shen. Blaster cool. Crowns getting buffed will now grant an Ezreal. Okay. Is that a buff if Ezreal's bad? Uh, Scholar Crowns will bad. now get a buff to a Bard and a better item, Spear of Shojin instead That's of Guardbreaker. And Blossoming Lotus uh, will no longer be offered on 2 1 when it Wait, was. Wait, that's actually a nerf. So, you don't do you want guard do you want spear of shojin and scholars i guess maybe if you want it for like on like zoe slash ari but uh that's actually a nerf <laughs> blossoming lotus still a good augment just comes on lately he's pretty bad nah. all right charm Ezreal's actually fine uh so with this patch we're gonna add but maybe that's just my take and who's getting new <clears throat> charms every patch charms like i said are a pretty fun mechanic they've landed really really well so let's talk about the four new charms. Uh, the first one's called Copycat. One gold, stage two and three. Get a one-star copy of the first enemy unit to die next combat. So you kill a one cost, you break even. You oh. kill a three cost, sweet. Plus two gold. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, Ironclad Spirit and Mystic Spirit. Those These are some late game combat augments. If you need some armor or some MR based on who you're facing, okay. you know you're facing them, you can give your whole team some armor and MR. For one gold. Good stuff. And then Spawn Swarm. Uh, this is four these are, gold on these are stage pretty good. Your first two front row units spawn a Voidling after death. So if you wanted that, cool. That's pretty decent as well. Uh, four gold is, four gold is uh, you might think this is kind of expensive, but this is basically four gold that turns into um, two ZZ Rots. And that's, that's real. Like, it, obviously, it doesn't work exactly like that because ZZ Rots are at the beginning of the fight. But this is probably like going to average like a 60% win rate in stage four. This is the one that gives one back row unit 40% uh, attack speed. It's been okay. buffed down to two gold. Okay. Uh, Desperate plea. I'm sure a lot of people are happy to see this. Yeah. Desperate Hooray. Plea is being removed. Hooray. That being said, I do want to call out, it will likely be back in some form. No. Not ready to talk about what that form is. Wait. I think we have a rework we're pretty happy with. No, we were, we were, vibing. Now, we were vibing. We were vibing. We were vibing. Enhance. This is getting buffed down to one gold. Okay, gear swap. So gear swap is the one, by the way, that would give you a remover and reforger temporary for zero gold. We've removed that, but I'll fast forward to the line later. 
We replaced it with Tinker, which will give you a remover and reforger for zero gold all game. So basically, oh, there's no such okay. thing as a temporary remover okay. and reforger. Deal. I'm you down. Can just that's fine. Get a remover and reforger. This should that's, just that's, be that's, a that's net buff if you like getting a remover and reforger. Yes, sir. So I like it. I like it. No one should be sad about gear swap being removed. Hooray. Uh, minor Gambit, if you win, only getting plus one gold felt lame. You get plus two gold. Sweet. Okay. Uh, Phantom Emblem. This one's being buffed down to six gold. Uh, Shivanate. This okay. augment is silly. It was meant way to be good. silly, but having to wait until stage three before you could get it makes it pretty bad. It was like literally only good on 3 1. So now it's offered in stages oh, two and is three. It? I think it will now be a very powerful charm in two, like stage two. Wait, so really? The Shivanate bot. was only good on 3 1. Is that actually true? Hold on a second. I mean, I, obviously, this is not perfect data at all, but I was under the impression that Shivanate was actually quite good. Like sixty percent win rate on stage three. Yeah, I would, I, they they have the they have the more specific data, but like okay, that's not stage four. Uh, summon stage dragon. Four, like, this is a very powerful charm. Uh, it's going to do less Holy. damage by about ten percent. Forty five AD nerf. All of its damage is based off its AD. Yeah, so that will be nerfed. That's big. Might have to go harder. We'll see. Uh, the star. This is one of the Xerath charms. This is being nerfed up to seven gold. What's that one? Tinker, we already talked about, is now zero G and is offered. Is that the all one game. star upgrades? And Treasure Party uh, has been buffed down to six gold. So, so like I said, chest. expect to see us make these kind of adjustments throughout the rest of the set. And who uh, knows? Yeah, more new charms, upgrades. right? New charms will be fun. Yeah, yeah. And I think ultimately, this is where I think charms is a great set mechanic. Is because people like roll their eyes, like, oh, dragon's too strong, desperate play, like, da, da, da. like I hate charms. I think that's a really sloppy way to analyze it because they could always just rotate them out and put in new things and make it more interesting of just like small temporary buffs. And so this, and ultimately I think that charms end up being like a good way that the second feel different without feeling like they had to do an entire mid set of refreshing champions and traits because charms will interact with all these different things differently. Now these are kind of light, you know, armor and MR and not that big of a deal, but they, they do have the design space to do that. And I think that if they can think of their set mechanic in a way that makes it feel like this, where they could add more, because because th part of what makes um, it different, uh, difficult with set mechanics is that they they or rather the, the set balance is that if they reach set balance into a spot where they don't want to change much, they, people will think it's boring. Like let's say they let's say they get like they nail it and the pa the patch is very close to balance one month in. But the, for the last two and a half, three months of the set, they're just not going to change much. Like maybe like a like a one percent nerf here and a five percent nerf there. People are going to feel like the game hasn't changed enough. So I think this is where charms can really help with, and and ultimately that's why I, I'm I'm optimistic about it. And then bug fixes. Uh, multiple augments have had their descriptions updated to use the new damage amp stat. Okay, sweet. Right, cool tip. Six cases where Gwen could fail to cast and then be stuck for several seconds. Never know. Thank God. Hopefully Gwen is now exciting and fun to play now. Sweet. Callista no longer throw extra spears on her first attack each combat. Good. I oh. like it when champs work good. Uh, okay. Portal effects no longer miss when an allied Krug is the only unit alive. Okay. Didn't uh, two really ranged units that. with tiny but deadly will no longer fail to attack each other. <laughs> Wait, Great. what? Placing Thieves Gloves on a unit with a hero <laughs> augment no longer removes the oh. buff from them. There you go. So for some of you who are experiencing like your Deja losing the attack range, that was why. Oh, accomplice gloves what? now correctly so counts weird. as two point five items for the purpose of strongest unit. Um, Yumi can no longer spawn on the enemy okay. side of the board and eat the unit in that slot. Wait, so Yumi would just TP in and then couldn't like you would automatically delete a frontline unit? What the heck? I never used to see this bug. What about the what about the, uh, like Yumi blocking a melee unit? Is that considered a bug? And if so, did they change that? I don't see that. Yumi now correctly attaches to a new unit on combat start if her host was sold. Okay. Fixed a bug where frost statues could fail to spawn or spawn with incorrect health. It was possible to have them spawn with like exactly one health if they spawned on the wrong tick. That's been fixed. Oh, is that uh, why frost assassin... sucks? Maybe frost is actually very good as well. Who knows? They buffed the trait. They buffed the units. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's it, that. That's why sometimes when things look bad in the stats, it's it could just be because of something like just not working charm now properly shows a stealth effect on the unit that will leap during combat this one's Rare, great because okay. you click uh, it and you're like who's gonna jump now it's very clear the bunch of belts charm now properly makes champions larger when they're equipped with the effects of giant's belt okay get it giant's belt a and hyper roll scuttle puddle scuttles on stage eight are no longer massive sweet oh, okay and the overachievers portal will now properly show all charms a stage earlier than normally possible so 
And there you go. That's a patch. It's a pretty sizable patch. Like I said, a lot of augments, a lot of champions. <laughs> it's a huge patch. Uh, if there's something you it's feel like we missed, patch. let us know. But again, we also don't want to swing everything too crazy. But obviously, like the Syndra nerf is going to make a big change to the meta. Karma losing the healing. Cassivan nerf, stuff like that, as yep. well as some buffs elsewise. So it's definitely going to be a very different meta. The augments should hopefully be a more balanced. But again, hopefully. the goal on the other side is a even better meta where you feel like you can play a lot more things. So yeah, there you go. All right, and that is it for this patch. Um, that's yeah, that's it for this patch. Next patch there'll be some cool stuff. Patch after that there'll be some even more. Yeah, cool what stuff. new stuff? I'm what cool so stuff? Much of my time in Future Land. He's not talking yeah. about it. So good stuff. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Uh, until next time, take it easy. Thank you, more dog. All right.